What is going on everybody? Welcome back to this episode of Homebuilt Workshop. Today we're going to build this cool live edge hall table from a slab of maple and it even has hidden wireless charging. Check it out. Now I am going to start this project off with this cool piece of maple slab. It has a really cool live edge here. The thing has a lot of character. I want to keep as much of this live edge as possible, but down here at this end you can see that it's wider than at this end. Down here is about where I need it. So in order to kind of make that match up, I need to cut this at along an angle so that I have roughly the same thickness across that front live edge. So now hopefully you can see if I cut along this line, I'm going to have a more consistent width along this front edge. And that's exactly what I want. I'm going to use my circular saw and a straight edge to make this cut. One thing I didn't check was the condition of my blade. Turns out it was really dull and I had a heck of a time trying to get this thing sliced down. Woo, that's hard. I ended up raising the blade and making this cut in several passes. Probably should have done that from the beginning anyway. Now, before I do anything else, there are a couple of very small cracks along this side. I want to address that with a little bit of epoxy. I'm just adding a little bit of pigment to some two-part epoxy. I'm not really worried about any structural issues with these little cracks. They're not very big, but I just want to make sure that they are not able to spread later on down the road. A year from now, three years from now, however long, I don't want anything further to come out of these cracks. I'm just going to drizzle the epoxy over the cracks. And once I have all the cracks covered, I'll heat it up with a blowtorch. This helps remove the air bubbles and it also thins the epoxy and helps it run down in the cracks. Once the epoxy is cured overnight, I'm going to remove the majority of it with a card scraper. And then I'll make sure it's nice and flush with my sander. So now that I have all these cracks taken care of, I can now trim this down to the final length. It doesn't need to go much, really. I'm just gonna square up both sides. I'm gonna do this using my circular saw because I can't fit this thing on my table saw here. I am now going to add this cool dual wireless charging station. This table is going to be located near the most used entrance to my home. I can see coming in, setting your keys down, maybe taking your phone, setting it on the table which actually will activate the charging so you can charge it wirelessly. This thing is big enough to where we'll be able to have two devices charging at the same time. This thing will be hidden underneath the top. I'm going to cut a recess in the bottom where this can just stick right up in there. But first I need to mark out where I want to locate it on the top. I'm just kind of choosing a spot where it's not hanging off the edge. I'm going to apply some tape to the top. That way I can make some marks and measurements and be able to transfer them all to the back. So now I'm going to set this aside for a little while and we're going to make a little router template that this charger fits. I'm going to trace out the size of this charger on a piece of MDF. Splinter free. To cut that out, I'm going to dust off this old thing I haven't used in forever, but it's time to bring back the scroll saw. Man, everything today is covered in dust. <laughs> 
when I inlay this, I want to have a marker on the top surface of this table so that I know where to place the device. I'm referencing these center marks and I'm transferring some lines to the outside of my template. That way, once I have the template in place, I can use those marks to reference a crosshair where I'm going to drill and install a little dowel. I need to know how much material to leave because I don't want to recess it too far down and then none of the charging happens. So I'm just going to do some tests with some different thickness material. If I take my phone and place it right on there, it goes right into charging. Now I want to try some different materials. I've got about a quarter inch thick piece here. We've got some thinner pieces here. I just want to see how thick I can have on top of that and still have a charge. So when I put this piece on that's about a quarter of an inch thick, it doesn't charge. Got this really large piece of eighth inch material. It's kind of big and awkward, but. So I'm kind of having a little bit of trouble because I have this extra super thick case on here. It's having a hard time getting the charge through even this thin material. So I already know that I'm gonna have to keep this pretty thin on the top. I'm not really worried that it's gonna cause a problem. It's only gonna be a small area and it's not like it's gonna be a real heavy use table where something's gonna get smashed on there and it's gonna break through. But I don't wanna go too thin or it'll get too brittle. So there's like a fine line is what I'm finding out. So if you're gonna do something like this, make sure that you do some testing with some different materials to see what works with your phone, your case, your charger, your wood, Whatever you're going to use, make sure you test it and make sure it's going to work for you. Now I can attach my router template using some double-sided tape. I'll transfer my crosshairs to mark two center points where I can install a colored dowel. Now I'll just drill out the marker hole. Since my template is located on the underside, I'm just drilling it all the way through to the top. With the marker dots glued in, now it's back to the drill press with a forcener bit to remove the majority of the material for the cavity. That's quite the pile of shavings. Good thing I decided to take that out with a forcener bit rather than trying to do it all with a router. That would be crazy. I can now use a template bit in my router and finish routing that cavity. Now this cut is just too much to make in one pass, so I just made consecutive passes, lowering the router bit each time. And now using a speed square as a straight edge, I'm going to route a small channel for the power cable to exit the back of the table. All right, we'll just do a little quick cleanup and test our fit. Nice. All right. Now that I have this cavity fitting the charger really well, I need some way to hold the charger in so that it doesn't fall out once this table's set up. Now a very common method seems to be to drop the charger in place and run a bead of hot glue around there, and I don't see any issue with that at all. In fact, that's actually what I was going to do for this project, but I think I want to do something just a little bit different. I looked in the scrap bin and I found some strips of walnut. I want to cut some notches where this strip can fit down in. I'll also cut some mating notches here so that it fits down in. Kind of a half lap sort of joint and that will hold right against the back of my charger. At least for these smaller router cuts that I need to make, I'm kind of liking using the speed square as a straight edge.
just test the fit of those brackets, they're just a little bit proud of the surface of the table, so I'm going to use my freshly restored Stanley number no. 4 and plane them down flush with the surface of the top. If you want to see how I restored this thing from a rusty mess, I'm going to put a link in the video description. Now I need to drill and countersink a teeny hole here so that I can attach these with some screws. Nice, that's gonna work really well. There is one last thing that I wanna to do to this top before we move on to the base, and that's to put just a decorative chamfer around the top edge where the edges are squared. I'm not gonna do anything along the front edge except a little bit of sanding when we're ready to put the finish on there, but I do wanna put just a tiny chamfer around the back and these little parts on the sides. So here is the square tubing that I'm going to use to build the base for this. This is one inch square tubing. It is an 11 gauge. This is going to be way overkill for what I need for this small table, but I wanted it to have some weight to it. It's going to be long and narrow, so I wanted to make sure that there's some heft in there to keep it pretty stable and not wanting to tip over. Now most of these are already pre-cut. My local steel yard made most of the cuts for me, but there are still a couple that I'm going to have to do. And to make those cuts, I'm going to get my workout in with a hacksaw. <laughs> now that my arms are getting tired, I'm going to clean up and bevel the edges of those small pieces on the belt grinder. It's time to move all this stuff outside. I can't really weld inside the shop here, so I have to do it outside. It's not really that big a deal. Luckily, this work surface is not bolted to anything, so I can just pick this up and I'll take it outside and we'll work right on this. Before I start welding, I'm gonna spend a fair amount of time making sure everything is square. And we are good to go. Let the sparks begin. The last pieces that I'm going to weld in are these little triangle shaped gussets and they're actually not going to be for strength. They're going to be to attach this to the wall if I need to secure this to the back. That way I can just run a screw through if there's any chance of tipping. I don't think I'm going to need these, but I'd rather have them in there now and not need them than need them later and have to weld them in. And these brackets are going to be to secure the top. I can run a screw up through there. The hole's a little bit oversized from the screw that I'm going to use. That way it'll account for any wood movement. Since I plan to paint this base, I'm going to spend a little bit of time grinding down and cleaning up each of the welds. I'm going to first use a grinding disc to remove the majority of the material. Then I'm going to switch over to a flap disc. Flap discs are great for cleaning up and finishing the welds. Here's a little tip for tools like this that have a special wrench. If you attach the wrench right to the cable, whether you're using a zip tie or you can electrical tape it, it's sometimes a pain to use with it attached right to the cord, but you never lose it and it's always there when you need it. With everything cleaned up, I'm now gonna prepare it for paint by wiping down each of the parts with acetone. 
this is going to remove any oil and grease that may be on the steel that could potentially affect our paint job. Now I'll just apply a couple of coats of satin black spray paint. While that paint's drying, I need to make the very last pieces that are gonna be required for this project. I'm gonna make some little wooden plugs that go in the bottom of the feet so that when it sits on the ground, it doesn't mar up the floor. I'm gonna make these feet using my crosscut slide on the table saw. I cut a scrap of wood that's one by one so it matches the size of the steel tubing. Then I raised my blade the thickness of the walls of the tubing and set up a stop block to make everything repeatable. Now a little bit of final sanding so we can get some finish on this thing. I want this to feel nice and smooth so I'm sanding it up to 320. Now I'm just going to take a minute with a clean rag, make sure I have all the dust removed from the surface because we are now ready to put some finish on this thing. For the finish, I'm just going to use some good old wipe-on poly. It's been a little while since I've used any wipe-on poly in a project, but I believe that this clear satin is going to give me just the amount of protection and the sheen that I'm looking for. Shake well before using. Man, look at that figure in there. There is a little bit of everything. We got some flame, we got a little bit of burl figure, a little bit of spalting, even some bird's eye. Man, a little bit of everything. After applying four coats of wipe on poly and sanding in between coats, finally this thing is ready to assemble. I'll just drop the charger into place, secure it with my wooden brackets. I'm going to use some wood screws to hold those brackets in place. Now I can just lift this base into place and the two shall become one. Ha -ha. Well guys, here is my finished table. I really like how that finish brought out the figure on this slab. I also like how the marker dots turned out above the charger. I am really happy with the way this table came out. This thing is going to work out perfect. You're going to be able to come in the door, set down your keys, drop your phone on the charger, and carry on about your day. Thanks a lot for watching this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I am going to enjoy having this table. It's going to be really nice to be able to come in the door, drop your things off, get a little charge on the phone. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big old thumbs up. Also, don't forget to check the video description for some helpful links. I've got a lot of other videos on my channel you might want to check out as well. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Joke, it's hot. That was <laughs> not smart. How about these lids? Am I the only one that can never get the dang lid off?
supposed to squeeze those things, but you got, you got to squeeze them with pliers. It's crazy. Why am I wearing sunglasses? Oh boy. They're not safety glasses. <laughs> I epoxied my finger. Can you believe that? <laughs>